Hello, uh, welcome back to the class. So we will go with the next design problem. Please write down this problem. A reinforced concrete beam is supported on two walls on two walls 750 millimeter thick thick spaced at a clear distance of 6 meter. The beam carries carries a superimposed load a superimposed load of 9.8 kilonewton per meter design the beam design the beam using using m20 concrete m20 concrete mix and and HYST bars of FE 415 grade FE 415 grade so solution So these are the design steps. So that is determination of dimensions, Calculation of design bending moment MUD MUD to check the adequacy of depth to calculate the area of tension steel tension steel AST required next step is check for shear check for shear next check for deflection that is number point number 6 And the last one is reinforcement details. Reinforcement details.
Let us go with the first one. What is the first step? Determination of dimensions. That is What is the meaning of determination of dimensions? We need to determine. So what are those cross-sectional dimensions? Breadth and the depth. So before going further, let me read the problem for you. A reinforced concrete is supported on two walls, 750 millimeter thick, spaced at a clear distance of 6 meter, clear distance. Okay, this is not effective distance, this is clear span of 6 meter. The beam carries a superimposed load of 9.8 kilo Newton per meter. Superimposed load is nothing but the live load. Design the beam using M20 concrete mix and HYSD bars of grade FE 415 steel. <coughs> Here first I draw the figure. Please write down the figure. And the width of the support on each side is 750 millimeter. So clear span or whatever the problem says, a clear distance between two supports is 6 meter. That is measured from inner face of one support to the inner face of the other support. And The resulting reaction on this support is going to be is going to be acting exactly in the midway of 750 millimeter. Similarly, on this side. Okay. See determination of dimensions. Look here. Superimposed load is given 9.8 kilo newton per meter. That is live load. So when we are designing, not only should we include the live load, but also we should include dead load as well. Here there is no other dead load given, any other dead load like you know wall, wall dead load everything that is not given. So once that is not given, we are not going to take it. However, we have to include the self weight of the beam. Okay. So self weight of the beam. If you want to include, if you need to include, then what you need is, you need the dimensions, overall dimensions. Do we have the overall dimensions of the cross section? This is a design problem. You need to find out everything from the beginning. After all, the design is finding out what are the dimensions of a beam required and also what are the tension steel and what are the stirrups we need. So that, that's what the design is. Here we don't know, unless we find out 
the cross sectional dimensions of the beam so we cannot find out what is the dead load is it clear to you so the first step is determination of dimensions so we are going to estimate what is b and what is d so by using thumb rule by using thumb rule the effective depth the effective depth is going to be 1/15th of the span to 1/10th of the span okay so 1/15 c when we use thumb rule okay it is not necessary that we should always use effective span here sometimes we may use effective span sometimes we may use clear span so it's okay because we are going to get two values and we can pick up a depth convenient depth between those two values okay 1/15th of span here it is 6 meter is the clear span even if you take effective span that is sorry center to center distance of 6.75 meter that is also fine so here i am taking only 6 meter that is 6000 mm that is 400 mm and 1/10 is okay so look here so i can pick up a depth total effective depth okay between any value between 400 and 600 so what i do is so let me consider an effective effective depth equal to 400 mm 400 mm so effective depth of the section is measured to the centroid of the tension steel from the compression zone that is d and of course we are going to provide stirrups okay so what is the overall depth so overall depth d is the effective depth plus the effective cover and the effective cover is going to be measured from the tension zone to the centroid of the tension steel so if you remember by assuming moderate exposure of concrete to the atmosphere clear cover to the reinforcement that is the stirrups is 20 mm and let us assume that we are using 8 mm dia stirrups and let us consider 20 mm dia tension steel then what is the effective cover as i said the effective cover is going to be measured from the edge of the tension zone to the centroid of the tension steel that is mild for a mild exposure from the code book it is 20 mm plus diameter of the stirrup plus half the diameter of the tension steel that is going to be the effective cover therefore total depth total depth equal to effective depth 
400 plus plus clear cover plus dia of stirrup plus half the diameter 10 steel of the dia of tension steel that is equal to 400 plus clear cover is 20 mm plus dia of stirrups is 8 because we are using 8 mm dia stirrups and half the dia diameter of tension steel what are the diameter of the bars we are considering here in the previous examples in the previous examples, yes, we took 16 millimeter diameter bars. In this case, we are taking 20 millimeter diameter bar. So it is 20 by 2. Okay. So what is the sum? That is equal to 400 plus this much. That is 38, 438. 20, 28, 20 by 2. that is the overall depth but we are not going to provide that fractional value as overall depth say 450 millimeter 450 millimeter so once you increase the overall depth from 438 to 450 millimeter even the effective depth changes so what is going to be the actual effective depth that is going to be the actual total depth we are providing minus the effective cover that is this. This remains the same. Therefore, actual effective depth okay, equal to actual effective depth D equal to. So overall depth we have provided is 450 minus the effective cover 20 plus 80 plus 20 by 2 that is equal to 412 millimeter that is the effective depth we are providing so now this dimension is fixed overall dimension is fixed so what is left next what is the width? Normally what we do is when it comes to the width we are going to consider the width of the beam as one third of the total depth equal to 150 millimeter to two third of the total depth that is equal to two third into 450 that is equal to 300 millimeter. So you can pick any width between these two including this or this. So therefore let us consider the width of the beam B equal to 300 millimeter. Okay. So now D is fixed. What is this? 450 millimeter. So width is 300 millimeter. And the effective depth is 412 millimeter. Okay, now we know the dimensions. Okay, so once we know the dimensions, we can find out what is the dead load. Light load is already given 9.8 kilonewton per meter. 
For that, we need to add the self weight of the beam to find out what is the design moment finally. Okay? Next is calculation of design bending moment M U D. Under that, the first step is the calculation of the load or sorry, to find out the effective span. That is the first step. The effective span. So effective span as per the code, effective span is lesser of the following two cases. as per the code. Okay, just to remind you, please open the code book on page 34, 22.2a. Please open it. 22.2a. It says, for simply supported beam or slab. Okay, the effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its support shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of slab or beam or center to center of supports, whichever is less. So, I have discussed this in the previous example, just I am trying to refresh your memory. So, it is lesser of the following two cases. What are those two cases? The distance between the centers of two supports, so that is the distance. Okay, so what is this? What is that distance? Six meter. That is a clear span. Span plus half the width of the support. width of the support two times two times the reason is we have got two supports so half the width on this side and the other half on the other side so that is 6 meter plus two times half so what is the width of the support that is 750 millimeter so we have this value in meter. So I am going to substitute 750 millimeter in meter that becomes 7.75 meter. Okay, that is equal to 6.75 meter. And the next case is clear span plus effective depth. So what is the clear span? Of course, 6 meter plus what is the effective depth we have provided? 412 millimeter. That is 0.412 meter. That is 0 0.412. That is equal to 6.412 meter. So we have two values. The code says take lesser of those two values as the effective span. The, therefore, effective span L E equal to 6.412 meter. Okay. So, this is the effective span that is calculated. 
the next step is to find the self weight of the beam to find the dead load so in this case dead load is the self weight of the beam there is no other dead load okay i'm going to call that dead load as wd okay so dead load of the beam i don't say dead load self weight of self weight of the beam equal to area of cross section cross section of the beam multiplied by the unit weight of unit weight of reinforced concrete okay so what is the area of cross section of the beam this is the width and this is the depth total depth see when you are considering the self weight of the beam you should not consider the effective depth instead you should consider the overall depth so the overall depth is 450 mm so i am going to find out the area of cross section of the section that is 0.3 meter multiplied by 0.45 meter so i am converting everything into meter so that i am going to get the area of cross section in terms of meter square so what is the unit weight of rc that is 25 kilo newton per meter cube if you refer is 875 part 1 so you are going to get the unit weight of reinforced concrete equal to 25 kilo newton per meter cube okay so after simplification you are going to get the value equal to kilo newton per meter i hope you understood this is kilo newton per meter cube when we are putting the value in terms of kilo newton per meter cube these two values should be in meters okay and the self weight of the beam is 3.375 kilo newton per meter so i have called this as wd not capital wd it should be small wd okay therefore the total service load the total service load so i am going to call this as w okay is sup superimposed load you can call this as wi or wl i stands for superimposed l stands for live load so whether it is superimposed or live load it is one and the same okay superimposed load plus dead load that is the self weight of the beam in this case so what is wi here it is given 9.8 kN per meter that is 9.8 kN plus what is wd that is 3.375 okay therefore w equal to that is 
13.175 kilo newton per meter okay so it is written right 13.175 kilo newton per meter that is the total service load okay but we are not we are not supposed to take this load as it is and design no in limit state design what we have to do is we have to multiply each of those these values by their corresponding load factors as given in the code book okay here the load factor for the imposed load that is for the live load is 1.5 and for this it is 1.5 as well so because i have the load factor same load factor for these two i have added this and i am going to multiply this value by 1.5 to arrive at the design load in case the load factors differ for live load and dead load then to arrive at design load you must multiply this value by that particular load factor say 1.7 for this say it is 1.4 then you have to multiply 1.4 with this so when you add that then you are going to get the design load finally okay here same 1.5 for dead load and 1.5 1.5 for live load so i have added these two numbers this is the total service load therefore the design load the design load i am going to call that value as wed is 1.5 times that is gamma f multiplied by w that is 1.5 times 13.175 okay that load comes to 19.76 kilo newton per meter okay so this is the design load or you can call it as ultimate load or factored load they are one and the same is it clear to you so now we have the span that is the effective span and we have the design load so we'll go with the next step Nineteen point seven six kilo newton per meter, and the effective span is six point four one two meter. Okay, this is the final loading beam or loaded beam. and it is loaded with the design load so this is the calculation of design bending moment therefore design bending moment i'm going to call that design bending moment as mud that is wud l e square by 8 okay where l e is the effective span 
So that is 19.76, 6.412 square divided by 8, that is MUD equal to 101.55 kilonewton meter. 101.55 kilonewton meter or MUD equal to 101.55 into 10 to the power of 6 newton millimeter. Okay, so this step is over, that is calculation of design bending moment MUD value. What next? To check for the adequacy of depth. To check for the adequacy of depth. What it means? See, by using thumb rules, we arrived at the overall depth of the beam as 450 millimeter. So by taking out effective cover, the effective depth was 412 millimeter. Okay, but we are not sure that depth is adequate to take care of the design bending moment of 101 point something that is, that is 101.55 kilonewton meter we just calculated. In case the depth of 412 millimeter is not adequate, then we have to go back and increase the depth. And also, we have to do the designing from the beginning. So, first we are going to check. So, we are going to check the adequacy of depth against MU limit value. If you open page number 96 of the code book, we have MU limit equal to 0 0.36 XU max by D 1 minus 0 0.42 XU max by D multiplied by BD square FCK is it not? So op open page number 96 That is under 1.1 C. That is 1.1 C, page 96. Okay. So for MU limit value, we are going to substitute the value of MUD. We just now calculated that is 101.55 into 10 to the power of 6 equal to 0 0.36. If you remember XU max by D for FE 415 steel, what is the value? That is 0 0.48 from page number 70. That is 0 0.48. 1 minus 0 0.42 into 0 0.48 and what is the value of B? So we are going to take the value of D as it is. So that is 300 millimeter and D square that is the value we are trying to find out. What is the minimum effective depth required multiplied by FCK is 20. So after simplification we get D equal to D equal to 350 millimeter. 
So that is the depth required, 350 millimeter is the depth required for a balance section. So therefore, D required equal to 3 for a balance section. equal to 350 millimeter minimum depth minimum effective depth we have to provide is 350 millimeter but in reality how much we have provided therefore actual depth provided is d that is equal to 412 millimeter which is greater than 350 millimeter required therefore the depth provided is adequate okay and one more thing when we are providing more than the balance section depth automatically we go for under reinforced section the section is going to be under reinforced is it clear to you so we will go with the next step And in this step, to check for adequacy of depth, what we did was we made use of the formula of MU limit equal to something as given in 1.1c on page 96 of the code book. So when we calculated the minimum effective depth required to take care of lecture, I, we got the value of D required equal to 350 millimeter. But D provided was 412 millimeter. So we provided more than what it was required. So once we increase the depth, what happens is uh, the lever arm increases. To resist a given moment, if you increase the depth, then you need less area of steel. That, that gives rise to under reinforced section. So in this case, 350 was the minimum required for a balance section and 412 was the area sorry was the effective depth provided so it was under reinforced that's why i'm going to make use of the formula of under reinforced section given in 1.1 b to calculate the area of steel required okay therefore we have M U equal to 0.87 F Y A S T D 1 minus A S T F Y divided by B D F C K. This is the formula we have. Okay. And by substituting the known values here, and for M U we have to we have to substitute the value of the design bending moment we got due to the external load. So what was the value? That was 101.55 kilo Newton meter. Convert that value into Newton millimeter. That is equal to 0 0.87. Fy is 415 multiplied by AST. We don't know. That's what we are trying to find out. And D is the effective depth provided 412 1 minus AST into 415 divided by 300 is the breadth, 412 is the depth and for M20 concrete FCK value is equal to 20 Newton per millimeter square. Okay. So on further simplification, we are going to get the equation like this. 
a s t square minus 5956.56 a s t plus plus 4.066 into 10 to the power of 6 that is equal to 0. So this is in the form of a x square plus b x plus c. So by solving for a s t we get a s t equal to 786.44 millimeter square. Okay. So that is the minimum area of tension steel we need. Okay. So let us use 20 mm diameter bars. 20 mm diameter bars. Therefore, number of number of 20 mm diameter bars equal to total area required 786.44 divided by area of each bar that is equal to 2.5 of course we cannot provide 2.5 bars so we are going to provide 3 bars say 3 bars ok so once you provide 3 bars so the actual area of steel we are going to provide is going to increase it is not going to be this value anymore Therefore, actual area of steel provided, again I am going to call that as AST itself, 3 multiplied by pi by 4 20 square because we have 3 bars. That is equal to AST equal to 914.50 millimeter square ok so this is the actual area we are providing next thing is we have to check for AST minimum and AST maximum check for AST minimum, AST minimum. So, from 26.5.1.1A, page, I think it is 47, page 47. So, we have AST minimum divided by BD okay, equal to 0 0.4 divided by 0. Point, sorry AST FI AST minimum BD FCK that is equal to 0 0.85 divided by FY 0 0.85 divided by FY. So when you are writing this in the examination, it is not necessary that you have to write all these things, no. So whatever I have written here, that is purely for your reference. Is it, is it clear to you? So in the code book, if you go here, if you look at this formula, they have given only as ASC, AS. So that is nothing but AST minimum. So I have called this as AST minimum. Therefore. AST minimum equal to 0 0.85 divided by FY multiplied by BD. That is equal to 0 0.85. FY is 415. B is 300. D is 412. That is equal to 253 millimeter square. That is the area of minimum area of tension steel required. So this is therefore AST is greater than AST minimum. Therefore, okay. 
So what is the actual ASP 914.50? What is the minimum we have to provide? 253 millimeter square. What it means is in case this value is say 200 millimeter square. What is the AST minimum value? 253. So in such case what we do is we are going to go ahead and provide at least 253 millimeter square area of tension steel. So that is done to avoid brittle fracture of steel. Okay. In this case, yes, we are okay. Similarly, we have to check for AST maximum. To check for AST maximum. Again, from 26.5.1.1b on page 47 AST maximum equal to 0.04BD D is capital we need to consider the overall depth but not the effective depth so it is 0.04 300 is the breadth, 450 is the depth, that is equal to 5400 millimeter square. This is AST maximum. So AST maximum is greater than AST we are providing. Therefore, okay. So in the previous case, I am going to remind once again. In case this value goes below AST minimum, we go ahead and give at least this much of area. But when you check for AST maximum, in case this value goes beyond 5400 millimeter square, that is say, this is say 5500 millimeter square, which is greater than 5400 millimeter square. In such case, so you should not go ahead and provide 5400 millimeter square instead what you have to do is you have to go back and increase the section size. Now we have provided 300 millimeter width and 450 millimeter overall depth. So that area is not adequate okay, to take care of the steel that is to put the steel. So in such a case, what we do, again as I said just now, so go ahead, increase the section size, okay, breadth and depth or this or this or both. Then redesign the section, calculate the self weight once again, find out the new design bending moment, find out what is the area of steel required, actual area of steel required. Then again check that AST actual area steel required with AST minimum and also check with AST maximum. Is it clear to you? Next check for development length. Check for Check for development length LD. So from 26.2.1 page 42, let me reconfirm it. Yes, it's correct. LD equal to phi sigma s 4 tau BD. Okay. So find out what is the value of LD. So if you go to again 26.2.1 page 42, phi is the diameter of the bar we are providing. 
sigma s equal to 0 0.87 fy and 4 and tau bd is the bond strength of concrete. So what is the value we should take? Again go to page number 43 of the code book. Look at the top. Look at the top. At the top there is a table under 26.2.1.1. There is a table. So for M20 concrete, if you refer, tau BD value equal to 1.2 Newton per millimeter square. So that value is for mild steel bar. When you are using HYSD bar, the surface is rough. In case of mild steel bar, the surface is smooth. So it will have a bond strength of, design bond strength of 1.2 Newton per millimeter square. When it comes to HYSD bar, the surface will be rough. So as a result, the design bond strength will increase. We can increase that value by 60%. So where it is given? Again, if you go to page number 43, first column under 26.2.1.1 in the first column if you read the first two lines which I am going to read now for you guys for deformed bonds bars conforming to IS 1786 these values shall be increased by 60 percent so whatever the values given in the table just above the lines so you can increase those values by 60 percent okay as I said, for M20 concrete, it is 1.2 Newton per millimeter square. So I'm going to multiply that 1.2 by 1.6 because I'm increasing the value by 60%. So this is the diameter of the bar, 20 millimeter diameter. That is phi value. Okay, just I'm going to write one more step. Phi 0.87 Fy divided by 4 tau bd that is equal to phi is 20 millimeter diameter bar 0 0.87 into 415 divided by 4 so tau bd value from again 26.2.1.1 from that table it is 1.2 newton per millimeter square I am increasing that by 60% for HYSD bar. So this is 1.6 multiplied by 1.2. Finally, I am going to get this value equal to 940 millimeter. Okay. So this is from 26.2.1.1 page 40. Okay, this is the development length. Again, if you go to page number 44, please go there. So, under 26.2.3.3, positive moment reinforcement, at least one third the positive moment reinforcement in simple members and one fourth the positive moment reinforcement in continuous member members shall extend along the same face of the member into the support to a length equal to LD by 3. So what it means is, I explained this in the previous example, I am going to refresh your memory. This is the beam and this is the support of 750 millimeter support width is 750 millimeter okay and We have three bars of 20 millimeter diameter
So if you look here, I have not curtailed any bars here. That means I have not cut any bars. What I have done here is I have continued all the three bars into the support. But the code says, so in case of simply supported, at least one third the number of bars should be continued here into this support. So we have three bars. Okay. So as per the code, we can only continue and we can cut two bars. But practically speaking, we need at least two bars. Okay. So those two bars should be continued here. And if you need, you can cut one of the three bars, which is in the middle, somewhere here, because we don't need all the three bars to take care of bending moment here, because we have minimum bending moment here. Okay, we design the bending moment, uh, we design the section for bending moment at the midsection where we have maximum bending moment. Okay, for that we got three bars. So, development length. So, that is measured from the face of the support. That's what the code says. So, from the face of the support, the bars, at least one third, here I am not taking only one third, I am taking all the bars into the support. So, that should be continued for a distance equal to LD by 3. From here, it should be at least LD by 3. So, what is LD here? It is 940 millimeter. Therefore, LD by 3 equal to 940 divided by 3. That is equal to 314, say, 315 millimeter. Okay, that is as per 26.2.3.3 point point A, page 44. page 44. So what it means? You have to continue this bar at least for a distance equal to 315 millimeter. But how long we have continued? This is 750 millimeter. If you take the side cover, side effective cover for the steel here 50 mm so, we have extended the bar for a distance equal to 700 millimeter. Okay. That 700 millimeter provided is greater than the minimum required of 315 millimeter. So, we are okay. Okay. So, here I am going to show the side cover of say 40 mm. Okay. So, Therefore, actual development length measured from the face of the support equal to support thickness 750 millimeter minus the side effective cover that is 40 mm that is equal to 710 millimeter that is the actual effective depth provided this is greater this is greater than ld by 3 greater than ld by 3 that is equal to 315 millimeter therefore okay is it clear to you so here once again keep in mind i am not curtailing any bars so I am going to repeat, I am not curtailing any bars, I am continuing all the three bars up to this point. If at all you cut some of the bars out of those three bars we have here, so I am going to show you a cross section. If you take a cross section here,
that is 412 millimeter overall is 450 millimeter this is 300 millimeter okay so if at all you want to cut a bar you can only cut only one bar that is the middle one at certain distance from the support okay so but where exactly we need to cut it is not going to be at one seventh of this span so if you remember the previous example we cut 50 percent of the bars we had four bars in the previous previous example out of which we curtailed two bars that means 50 percent so we knew around one seventh of this span from this support we will have 50 percent of the maximum bending moment value if you remember the bending moment diagram at about one seventh of the span the bending moment at that section will be about 50 percent of the maximum bending moment is it clear there we can cut 50 percent of the bars however as per the codal recommendation so that is the theoretical cutoff point from the theoretical cutoff point we have to extend the bar for a distance equal to 12 times the diameter of the bar or one effective depth whichever is greater that's what we did however in this case because we are curtailing only one bar okay we are curtailing only one bar so the moment of resistance of this section will not be half instead it will be around two third of the maximum bending moment that is the design bending moment we take then we have to find out where exactly we have to theoretically cut off that one bar okay once you find out where you can cut that bar that one bar from there you extend that for a distance equal to 12 times the diameter of the bar or one effective depth so this requires little bit of you know calculation everything so by keeping that in mind what i have done is i have ignored it instead i have continued all the three bars into the support so um, that way i'm using little bit extra material of the steel is it clear to you so that's that's it for this next so this is done check for development length is done minimum area of steel maximum area of steel and area of the steel is also calculated using the formula so this step is complete okay what is the next step to check for shear to check for shear So if you remember what I explained before in this module, in the beginning of the module, when it comes to shear, 
if this is a beam and if this is the support and of course this beam is subjected to some load. So if you draw the shear force diagram by assuming that this beam is going to be subjected to uniformly distributed load then this is the way you are going to get the shear force diagram. Okay. So the code says the critical section for shear is going to be at a distance of one effective depth from the face of the support at this section find out what is the shear force. This shear force is less than this value. Okay. So for this, for this shear force we have to design and we have to provide shear reinforcement. Okay. However, just to make the simple, this one calculation simplified, we can do the clear span that is from the inside face of the support to the other side. So what is the clear span? 6 meter in this case. So there at that level you can take that shear and you can design for shear at that value. So this value is little bit greater than this. That's okay. Because you are designing for shear for a higher value. That way you are going to be little bit safer. Again to further simplify what I do is. Instead of taking at the face of the support. That is instead of taking the clear span. What I have done is I have taken the effective span which comes somewhere here. Again, that shear is going to be more than the shear here and here. Again, because I am taking higher value of shear, I am going to be more safe. So that is what I am doing. I am committing an error in calculating the shear, that is the exact shear. Instead, I am taking the shear towards higher value. Okay, that error I am committing is on safer side. Okay, I am doing that just to save time and also to avoid complexity of the problem. So I can go ahead and do everything. But within the given time frame in the examination, if you keep doing all those things, the time will not be enough for you. Just to avoid that, I have taken the effective span and whatever the design load and I have taken the reaction. Okay. So that reaction is going to be taken as the design shear force. Is it clear to you? Therefore, design shear force V U D equal to W U D L E by 2 ok design shear force V U D equal to W U D L E divided by 2. So what is W U D that is 19.76 19.76 multiplied by the effective spans 6.412 divided by 2 that is equal to 63.36 sorry 63.35 kilo newton ok that is what I have written here. So now nominal shear stress Nominal shear stress tau V equal to V U D divided by 
BD. So this is as per page number 40.1, page 42. Please open page number 42. Sorry, page number 72. I am sorry, not uh, 42. It is page 72. Okay. So what is VUD? It is 63.35 kilonewton multiplied by 1000. So that is going to be in Newton. So B is the width of the beam. D is the effective depth which is 412 millimeter. So that is equal to 0 0.51 Newton per millimeter square. So that is the shear stress developed at the section where we have the maximum shear okay, due to the design load. So that is 0.51 Newton per millimeter square. So if you go to page number 73 and refer table 20 and compare this value with tau C max for M20 concrete. So for M20 concrete, tau C max is 2.8 Newton per millimeter square. So this is as per table 20 page 73 of the code book. Again, whatever table number I write, whatever page number I write, that is purely for your reference and you don't have to write these things in the examination. Okay. So because this value 0.51 Newton per millimeter square is less than twice tau C max, then we don't have to go for redesign of the section. In case this value exceeds 2.8, then the section we have provided is not adequate. So you go back and increase the sectional dimensions and redesign the entire section starting from the bending, shear, etc. Okay. So therefore, no redesign of the section is required. No redesign of the section is required. Okay. So what next? So the next thing is we need to provide stirrups. We need to provide bent up bars. Here we are not provided any bent up bars because we are continuing all the three bars of 20 millimeter diameter at the bottom to the support. We are passing it. We are not curtailing and we are, and we are not bending any bars. So, shear strength contribution from bent up bars is going to be zero here. So, the next thing is what is the shear strength contribution due to concrete? And also, what is the shear strength due to steel? Okay. So, here we have not, because we are designing and we know the sectional details and also the percentage of tension reinforcement, we can find out what is the shear, design shear capacity of concrete based on the percentage of tension reinforcement. Okay. And that value is compared with this. If this value is higher than the concrete capacity, then for the remaining load, we are going to go ahead and provide stirrups. So let us proceed to calculate tau C value, to calculate tau C that is the design strength of concrete. So that depends on the percentage of tension steel and the grade of concrete. So go back to page number 72. Okay, look at the top, that is table 9. So just I am going to work on that table. Okay. Percentage of 
tension reinforcement okay equal to at the section where we are finding the shear strength of concrete okay not at the mid section instead it is at the support so percentage of tension reinforcement at that section is we have three bars of 20 millimeter diameter divided by bd what is b 300 d is 412 okay multiplied by 100 we are going to get this value equal to 0 0.75 percent from table 9 table 9 sorry table 19 page 73 table 19 page 73 for m20 concrete tau c equal to 0 0.56 newton per millimeter square see for 0.75 percent steel we are going to get the value directly from the table Okay, any value between 0.5 and 0.75 or any value between 0.75 and 1, etc. We have to do linear interpolation. Here, the per, per, fortunately, the percentage is 0.75 percent exact. So, go back to the table. So, there is a value for 0.75 for M20 concrete. The value is 0.56 Newton per millimeter square. That is the design shear strength of concrete. Therefore, shear capacity, that is design shear capacity of concrete. So, if you remember, we have called that as VUC. That is given by tau C multiplied by BD. What is tau C value? That is 0.56 Newton per millimeter square and B is 300, D is 4112. So, we are going to get this value in terms of Newton. So, I am going to convert that into kilo Newton by dividing that value by a thousand. So, I am going to get the value of VUC equal to VUC equal to 69.22 kilo Newton that is equal to 69.22 kilo Newton. What is the design shear capacity of concrete 69.22. So what is the maximum shear force 63.35. What it means? It means so concrete itself is good enough to take care of the shear. This is greater than VUD that is equal to 63.35 kilo Newton. Theoretically speaking, we do not need any stirrups. Concrete is strong enough. However, to avoid brittle failure of concrete, so what we do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to provide some minimum reinforcement as specified in the code. So, here theoretically we do not need any shear reinforcement. However, we have to provide certain 
minimum reinforcement minimum reinforcement as per the codal recommendation as per the codal recommendation for that you open page number 48 of the code book please open it so if you refer 26.5.1.6 we have from 26.5.1.6 page 48 so we have to provide the stirrups in such a way that this condition is satisfied 0.4 divided by 0.5 8 7 f y that condition is satisfied so where asv is the area of stirrups two leg stirrups means it is two multiplied by the diameter of the stirrup bar b is the width of the beam sv is the spacing of the stirrups s suffix v of course f y equal to 415 so this can be further simplified and i can write this in the form 0.87 fy into asv divided by 0.4b i can write that this is sv less than equal to that means when we provide the reinforcement the spacing should be less than or at, at most equal to this value so let us use eight mm dia two legged stirrups eight mm dia two legged stirrups so by substituting the area of cross section of the stirrups in this section sorry in this equation we get sv should be less than equal to 0.87 into 415 into asv so we have two legged stirrups that's why i have written two and area of cross section of 8 mm diameter stirrup divided by 0.4 multiplied by 300 mm is the width of the beam so this value i am going to get equal to 302 mm what it says is we have to provide the reinforcement shear reinforcement in such a way that the spacing should be less than or at most equal to 302 mm so you can if you want you can provide a 300 mm center to center or 275 mm center to center 290 anything below this value okay but not beyond 302 but there are two more conditions so again if you go up on page number 48 so there are two lines again go back to the previous page so 26.5.15 it says maximum spacing of shear reinforcement so as per 26.26.5.1.5 page 48 page 47 page 47 maximum spacing 
spacing of stirrups should not exceed should not exceed it gives two values 0.75 d that is equal to 0.7 times 75 times d is the effective de depth which is 412 that is equal to 309 millimeter center to center and in no case it should exceed 300 millimeter center to center so we have three values the spacing should not exceed 302 which is the spacing should not exceed 309 millimeter center to center and the spacing should not exceed 300 millimeter center to center so out of these three value, values take the least what is the least 300 millimeter center to center so what is the maximum spacing of the stirrups two leg the 8 mm dash stirrups it is 300 millimeter center to center i am saying maximum spacing the reason is if you want to reduce the spacing to say 275 250 or 225 even 200 millimeter that's okay okay i am going to repeat the least of these three values is the maximum spacing of stirrups so in this case we are going to provide 8 mm dia two leg stirrups at 300 mm center to center therefore we shall provide we shall provide 300 mm sorry we shall provide 2 m 8 mm dia two legged two legged stirrups stirrups at 300 mm center to center so design of shear reinforcement is over next we'll go with, we'll go with the next step what is the next one to check for deflection open page number 37 and 38 for that please write down The next one is, I'm going to write here. I hope this is complete. check for deflection so if you open page number 37 and 38 I am going to refresh your memory so on page number 37 second column 23.2.1 it says the vertical deflection limits may generally be assumed to be satisfied provided that the span to depth ratios are not greater than the values obtained as below so we have the values for cantilever it is 7, seven. for simply supported it, it is 20 for continuous it is 26 so ours is a simply supported case so l by d ratio so should not exceed 20 in addition to, for 20 we need to give some correction so correction due to tension steel correction due to or we say modification so modification due to tension steel modification due to compression steel and also modification due to the result of t section action okay ours is a rectangular section and also ours is a singly reinforced section so we need to give only the modification factor for tension steel in the tension zone okay so for that 
what we have to do is again if you go to page number 38 if you refer figure 4 so how to get the modification factor under figure 4 so first find out what is the percentage of tension steel that is 0.75 percent we already calculated that okay then find out what is fs value if you look at the graph so just below that graph there is there is a formula fs equal to 0.58 fy multiplied by area of cross section of steel required divided by area of cross section of steel provided so from there from there you can get fs value once you have fs value on percentage of tension reinforcement so refer that graph and go horizontally you get modification factor due to tension steel so multiply that 20 number le by d should not be greater than sorry should not be less than 20 so multiply that 20 by that modification factor okay and check whether that value is that condition is satisfied or not okay so as per 23.21.1 page 37 so le by d should be less than 20 multiplied by modification factor due to tension steel okay so this is 20 multiplied by ft okay where is 20 for a simply supported beam yes we got this value from there so what is le le by d le by d equal to so le is 6.412 is is the effective span multiplied by 1000 so it is in millimeter and 412 is the effective depth provided so that is equal to 15.56 so i'm going to call this as equation 1 so le by d is calculated what is the next step this is ft that is the modification factor due to modification factor ft due to tension steel due to tension steel is what so we'll find out that so by referring by referring figure 4 page 38 fs equal to 0.58 fy area of cross section of area of cross section of tension steel required that is area of cross section of of steel required divided by area of cross section steel provided that is the tension steel provided so that is 0 0.58 multiplied by 415 okay so what is the area of cross section of steel required if you go back to the area of calculation of steel ast what was the value we got 786.44 millimeter square that was the value we got okay then we divided that value by the area of cross section of 20 millimeter diameter that is 786.44 divided by pi by 420 square we got number of bars equal to 2.5 but we cannot provide 2.5 bars instead we went ahead and increased 
are provided the bars now the provided three bars okay so in this case required as per the calculation was 786.44 okay so we provided three bars 3 multiplied by pi by 4 20 square okay so after calculation we get the value of fs equal to 200.8 newton per millimeter square that is one thing that is the fs value so what is the next step what else do we need to get the modification factor again look at figure 4 on page 38 we need percentage of tension reinforcement okay what is the percentage of tension reinforcement so that was 0 0.75 percentage of tension reinforcement equal to 3 bars of 20 mm dias dia b is 300 multiplied by d is 412 multiplied by 100 that is equal to 0 0.75 percent okay so look here 0.75 is already calculated so what you can do is you can directly pick up that 0.75 value from the previous calculation and you can directly write here instead of doing the calculation once again. Okay, for shear if you remember, we have calculated the percentage of tension reinforcement at this support. How many bars we had at this support? We had 3 bars, even at the mid section we have 3 bars. So percentage of reinforcement remains the same. Okay, so it is 0.75 percent. So by referring the graph or figure 4 on page 38, so for 0.75 percent of tension reinforcement, okay, if you go up for Fs value of 200.8, so I am going to get 0.75. I am going to get the value of modification factor equal to 1.25. So some people may get 1.2, some people may get 1.25, 1.26, 1.27. 1 Little bit of variation will always be there when you are reading the graph, but it's okay. Therefore, modification factor, okay. F t equal to 1.25. Okay, I am going to substitute this value here. So, by substituting, the values in equation 1, we get so what is Le by D? Le by D is 15.56. Okay. So what is 20 multiplied by Ft? Ft is 1.25. That is equal to 25. Okay. This should be less than this. That is 15.56. So 20 multiplied by 1.25 is 25. So 15.56 is less than 25 therefore the deflection condition is satisfied is satisfied okay the deflection check is over so that is step 6 is over what is the next step? Reinforcement details. Write down. Next is step 7.
reinforcement d tells reinforce that is 8 mm dia two legged stirrups Okay, this is some fifty millimeter, seven fifty millimeter. Okay. Clear span equal to six thousand millimeter. So this is the width that is equal to 300 millimeter. Overall depth is 450 millimeter. This is 2 of 12 mm dia bars nominal nominal. So this is 3 of 16, sorry, 20 mm diameter. So this is the cross section. Okay. So you take any cross section, A, A. It is the same cross section, A, A. So this is 8 mm dia two legged stirrups at 300 millimeter 
center to center. So same thing here, same stirrups. So this is two of 12 mm dia bars, nominal. Okay, so this is longitudinal section. Longitudinal section, and this is three of twenty mm dia bars. Okay, so this completes the design, and of course, this is the effective depth of four one two millimeter, and this is the effective cover of. 38 millimeter. Okay, so this completes the problem. So please write down this. This is very important. Any design without a drawing is completely useless. So thank you. We'll take up another example that is cantilever example in the next class. Thank you.